Hi Floss Tube. I'm Misty Purcell. I'm the designer and fabric dyer of Luminous Fiber Arts. And I'm really excited to be here with you today to show you my new releases for Nashville Needlework Market. Um, feels like it's been a long time coming, but I guess compared to people who knew they were going last year, it's not been that long for me. I found out in late October that I had gotten in that a space had opened up and I've been working hard ever since to get ready. So we're closing in on the market and I'm here today to show you what I've got. So welcome, if this is your first time here, thanks for visiting me. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Um, I've definitely been nervous about making this video and not like I know what I wanna say, but I'm not sure that I know what I wanna say and that I'll forget things. So I was like, it's just time to make the video. Gotta, gotta eat your frog or whatever it is. It's, you know, it's the, you gotta push through the anxiety. So that's what I'm doing. I'm here pushing through my anxiety. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I wanted to say is that I have four new releases coming out at market and you can order them from your favorite needlework shop. Um, shops can pick up the designs at market if they're attending and my designs will be available through my distributor Hoffman after the show. Okay, let's jump right into it, shall we? I've got my, my list of notes in case I forget something important, I'm just checking over. So the first design is one that I started working on mentally at least last April, and it is called Coffee First, because if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love coffee. And here it is, and I'm so happy with it. I feel like this design is very me. Um, so in late April of last year, I decided that I wanted to design something to celebrate my love of coffee. And I kept trying to think of what I could do and what I could say about coffee. I probably spent a couple of weeks thinking about it. And I finally, in early May, came up with the idea that um, I'm an early bird. I like to get up really early and stitch. And I used to have to get up really early to work sometimes too. Uh, but I'm an early bird and the last few years, I've discovered that if I try to send any kind of communication before I've had coffee, There'll be something wrong with it. Like I can do some things without having finished coffee, but sending emails is not one of them. And I would send emails like four or five in the morning and then get replies back that were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> these would usually be work emails. Um, so I, I, I came to realize these past few years that um, in order to properly function or at least communicate in words in the morning, I needed to have coffee first. And so that's part of what that design is about, that coffee helps me do the things I need to do. And um, so I was talking one night with my boyfriend and I was like, you know, I know like generally what I wanna say, which is that, you know, the early bird catches the worm or something about that, but needs, you know, the coffee is important. It has to happen first. And he kind of helped me finesse it down to first coffee, then the worm. And then as I was going to bed, I was thinking, you know, I want to call the design coffee first. So I'm going to change the wording around a little bit. And then the next morning when I got up, I already knew that I wanted it to be a bird perched on a cup. And initially the idea was that the worm would be on the saucer. So that's part of why this is a teacup and not really a coffee cup. Um, because I imagined the worm perched here initially. Although I do have this really cool latte bowl and the latte bowl I have inspired some of the coloring in this design. Um, it was a gift from a friend. So as I was, you know, figuring this out, this part came together really fast. I mean, I had this like the next day and then it was just kind of tweaking the lettering. And then at one point, you know, the worm was here and then it was up here and I kept moving it around. And my boyfriend was like, why don't you try putting the worm as the M? And I was like, well, I thought about that, but I don't know, I think it'd look weird. And he's like, no, just try it. And so I listened to him and then you can see it actually turned out awesome. 
And the funny thing was that a few months later, or maybe maybe several months later, as this was nearing completion, he was like, you know, that, that M as a worm is genius. And I thought he was trying to be smart. But he actually didn't remember <laughs> that it had been his idea. So now he says it again uh, as a joke because now he remembers that he's the one that suggested it. Um, so where I kind of had to struggle a little bit at first was figuring out what was the context for this design. And I had coffee beans at one point and there were various scenarios of what might be happening around the bird and the cup. But I kept kind of envisioning some kind of garden. And I was thinking about how um, early in the mornings when I get up, especially in the spring and summer, I hear bird song early in the morning. Um, and I was just thinking about birds and gardens and that just influenced me. And I started making these flowers and was talking with my mom and she was suggesting the, um, purple spiky flowers, the butterflies. I really like cabbage butterflies. I think they're, um, they always seem kind of playful to me. And I feel like this design is very much um, somehow who I am because it, uh, you know, celebrates my love of coffee and my love of birds and butterflies and flowers. And I used to do a lot of drawing as a kid of um, butterflies and flowers and I did entomology and I did wildflowers and 4-H. So, you know, the design feels very like me, I guess I would say. Um, and the humor. You know, there is a bit of humor, but it's also truth about how I feel about coffee. Um, so the whole the whole piece really feels um, authentic to me, and I'm really proud of how it came out. I'm really, really pleased with how all of my designs came out for market and um, just really excited about them. So this design, I guess I'll hold it again so you can see. This design is stitched on 32 count Whisper. Um, and since I don't wholesale my fabrics, if you're a shop and you need a substitute, the pattern includes, um, a suggested substitution from Picture This Plus. So all of my designs from here on out, if, if they use my fabrics, they'll always have a fabric substitute listed so that if you need an alternative, um, as a retail customer or as a shop that I have a suggestion for you. And, um... I like to go with Picture This Plus because they offer fabric in different, or they offer their dyed fabrics in multiple bases, which is what I do. So they have linen, Ada, Lugana, um, and I have a lot of customers who need linen, Ada, and Lugana. So um, they've been great to work with. So suggested substitutes are on the pattern. Thank you to uh, Teresa Bennett for her awesome tutorial on how to stretch and pin pieces for framing. Uh, that has just been amazing in helping me frame my pieces. So just a thank you to her for that tutorial. It helped me, it has helped me before and it continues to help me as I am designing and finishing things. So I really appreciate that. So shout out to Teresa. Um, this is what the pattern looks like. It is a booklet. And um, it's a four page booklet. So previously I haven't done anything quite this large. And what I've had has been like a, a little bit stiffer cardstock. And then this is what my printer offers when it's a booklet. It's a bit thinner, but very nice quality, kind of like magazine style pages. So that's the pattern. Um, here's something that I think is pretty cool and I'm really excited about. <clears throat> pretty early on, I knew I needed to do something special with this design. Ha. Yep. Mugs. So, cheers. Um, I'll have these at market and I will have them in my shop aftermarket. So you can get yourself a coffee first mug if you need it and it's on, cause I didn't want to leave out like anyone who is left or right handed. It's on both sides so that no matter how you're holding your mug, you can see it. It's been hard not to use this for the past. I got this a couple months ago and I couldn't show it any of the videos. I'd have to like switch mugs to make a video because I didn't want to show the coffee, coffee mug. 
Okay. Okay, so my second design is the next design in my bird series. I have four designs out now in my bird series. There's, um, it started with a bluebird's message, a Valentine's design. Then a bluebird's salute was the patriotic. A raven's reply is my Halloween bird design and a cardinal's carol was my Christmas design. So now we need an Easter design. And this is a robin's discovery. So all of these designs are approximately the same size so that you can switch them out. This is stitched on 40 count soft porcelain, which is a color that I dye. Again, the um, optional substitute fabric is listed on the pattern. And so I designed this actually last year. Initially, I was going to release it between the two Bluebird designs, but I realized that I would just always be behind if I did that. So uh, instead, I decided to skip this one and get ready for the summer earlier on. And that was really a good decision. Um, so I waited on this until this year to release it. And then I ended up changing kind of the surroundings of them. I had this kind of design more or less figured out. And then I changed and added these vines. I had some different flowers in there and I really love how it turned out. It was fun to stick a little butterfly in there. Um, I love these flowers. I really love bleeding hearts. So the robin discovers that the Easter bunny has been taking her eggs and hiding them. <laughs> um, the ribbon is Caribbean from Lady.Creates. And I had some metallic beads. I like to use beads that have like a pearly or metallic finish because it pops off the ribbon a little bit better. And then I just used some coordinating quilting cotton that was in my stash as the backing. I really recommend Vanna Pfeiffer's tutorial on how to ruche ribbon on a pillow. Uh, it's an amazing tutorial. Thank you so much, Vanna, for making it and sharing it with us. And I will link it below in case you need to check it out if you haven't done so yet. So I'm so happy with how this came out. I think it's really, really sweet. Okay, next design. So this next design, um, was inspired by a request and a conversation. So last year, my friend Cynthia asked me to design something for her retreat. She runs a quilt and yarn shop called Stitch Your Art Out here in central Pennsylvania. And she has a retreat every year in April. So she asked me last year if I would, since I'd started designing, if I would uh, design a cross stitch pattern for the retreat and then teach it at the retreat because most people who go are quilters or knitters. They may have stitched or not. And then I would just do something simple and teach them. So I designed Sew Tweet and I, you know, wanted it to have a sewing theme because most of the people who go to the retreat end up being quilters. So I did that. And then she asked me again this year if I would design something for the retreat. And so I wanted to do something again that was sewing themed. And I was trying to think of what I could do. And I came up with Savor Every Stitch. This is stitched on 40 count dapple by Picture This Plus. The rayon ribbon is Union from Lady.Creates. And then this was some fabric I purchased recently in case I needed it for Christmas or Patriotic. Uh, so that was handy that I had that on, on hand. Um, the, there's some long stitches in here. I actually used one strand, but I, I did it over twice here to give the threads on the spools a little bit more definition. And I was inspired by Kim Patterson to do that after seeing how she had stitched my sew tweet last year. There's a little bit of tent stitch here in the urns. Um, Smyrna's here, they're very easy to do. And I have a little, di I, I made my first diagram for you and it's in the pattern. So I also explain how to do, they're very simple. I mean, these are very simple specialty stitches, but just to give you something to try that was a little bit different if you haven't done them. And also for the people who are attending the retreat to kind of up their skills just a little bit, do something a little bit new and different for them. 
You can see I've got some little bees. There's cherries here, strawberries here, and I definitely needed a strawberry pin cushion here. Um, so how I came up with this design specifically, I knew I wanted it to be like sewing or stitching themed. I was thinking at the time that I was trying to design this about Stitch Mania. Um, during Stitch Mania, I had asked the question, how many whips are too many? Because I was thinking about how in, in Mania, people start a lot of projects and I get kind of anxious about having a number of whips works in progress. And, um, but I wanted to have more people who had lots of whips seem to be having fun. And I felt more anxious and burdened by them at times. And, and I, I wanted to know, I guess, like what other people's take was on that. And so I asked how many whips are too many on my video. And I got a lot of really interesting responses from people ranging from, you know, I can't have more than like a couple. It makes me anxious to like, I have a ton and it makes me anxious or it doesn't make me anxious. And everybody had different, different reactions. But one thing that came up kind of again and again was that people felt like the most important thing was that it should be fun. Like however many whips you have really doesn't matter. It's just that you enjoy yourself. And there was one comment that really touched me that I'd like to read to you. And when I re initially read it, I cried. And then when I reread it this morning, I cried. And so I'm going to try not to cry while I read it. And it was um, submitted by Thistle Stitcher. So I hope she doesn't mind that I'm reading her comment here. So this is what Thistle, Thistle Stitcher had to say. Hi, Misty. Thanks for another great video. I really enjoy listening to you as I stitch the hours away. I used to be a fairly monogamous stitcher. My best friend Maria, who never stitched, had to listen to me pine and moan about having such beautiful things in my stash that I wanted to stitch so badly, but I felt too guilty for starting yet another while I still had two or so that were whips. I lost Maria to cancer last year but I feel lucky that we had some months to say goodbye before she passed. One of the things she said was to never waste a day with coulda, woulda, shoulda. Life is too short to put off anything that brings happiness. She reminded me that there's no deadline to most of what I stitch. It's all here to bring me comfort and absolute joy, especially new, much anticipated starts. So today I have about 25 whips. I let go of the guilt and that stress feeling. <clears throat> it will be done when the last stitch is in and I will find joy in the journey. I salute my Maria with every new start because I know how lucky I am to have another day to do what I love and how quickly and unfairly that can be taken away. So thank you so much for that comment it really resonated with me and touched me um, and gave me a lot to think about. And, and all of the comments from the community really helped me. And I actually changed how I felt about my whips after reading those comments. So that, that dialogue that we had and um, I guess my realizations about what, what really is important were the inspiration for that design. And um kind of the lesson that I learned from the community and that I want to remember and that, you know, I want all of us, I guess, to remember that we're doing this for enjoyment and we don't have to feel guilty about uh, deadlines for things. I mean, yes, you may set deadlines for gifts and things, but really um, when you're doing this for enjoyment, don't, don't most of us have enough deadlines that we don't really need more um, so thanks to the community for teaching me that, uh, I needed to hear it and I've been able to enjoy my stitching a lot more since actually, because I don't push through to finish something just to have it done. I'm okay with, and, and I, I'm sure this is like a lifelong lesson for me. I, I'm okay with the fact that sometimes I need to let things be a process and rather than pushing through just for completion, 
Like I could wait on something and keep working on it a little bit more later and I would have more fun than if I just like, nope, got to plow through and get it done. Um, so there were a lot of really great comments on that video. Um, not just this little stitchers a lot that really gave me something to think about. So thank you so much for that dialogue. Um, that was called how many whips are too many. And it was from last May. If you happen to want to go read the comments. Okay. <clears throat> so last one. <laughs> I've shown a lot of sneak peeks of this one and it's called farm fresh eggs. And I'll say that if uh, you saw some of my posts on Instagram, it looked like I was doing some major carpentry work, but in the end that was not necessary. So you do not need to sweat this if you want to do the same finish I did. Um, kind of a long story. Okay. Here it is, it's kind of big. So, farm fresh eggs. I'll zo zoom in for you. Then I'll talk. It's like I'm concentrating on holding this and not dropping it. So I can't like talk too much at the same time coherently. Alrighty. This design happened after I found out that I had been accepted to Needlework Market and I wanted to try to come up with <clears throat> some more things to take with me. I wasn't sure whether to take like four or five things and I had three things, you know, that I was, that were in progress, which were the other three I just showed you. So, um, my inspiration piece was chicken related, I'll say that. And I ended up creating three designs that are all kind of related and have chickens in some form in them. Uh, but this was the one where I felt clearest about what I wanted and where it was going as I was progressing with this one. And so this is the one that I pushed to a finish and hopefully the other two can come out maybe the next two years at, at uh, this time. So, um, you know, it's definitely a spring theme, but also I think this could be up all year. Definitely spring and summer, I think would be, would be really appropriate for this. And, um, so I decided pretty early on as I was designing this that I wanted to say farm fresh eggs and I wanted the eggs to be somewhere, uh, in the sign originally. And this is like the main sign, but then it just didn't make sense they looked weird, whatever I tried to do. And then I was like, oh, I should just do ornaments. Like that would be super cute to have little egg shaped ornaments. Um, so I already had the chicks designed and I just started kind of designing an egg shape. Learning how to create an egg shape uh, was an interesting experience. I've been learning how to do a lot of new things in the past four months. I learned how to do Photoshop. Man, I've learned a lot of stuff. Tried a lot of new things. Um, so that was one of the new things I tried was trying to design an egg shape and then figure out how to put the template in a pattern and, and hope it came out the right size, etc, etc. I really love the colors in this design. I had a lot of fun picking them. I wanted something that looked cheerful and a little bit old. Like that the colors would be a little bit faded and not super, super bright. And I didn't want them to be really pastel. So that it could be, like I said, Easter or spring or summer, you know, it could be a little bit more timeless and also just go with your farmhouse decor. So, um, I framed the piece myself and then I made the eggs using, oh, I should say this is on 32 count <clears throat> dapple. Save for every stitch is on 40 count dapple. So they're the same fabric. And, um, the Rick Rack, oh, Dapple, I said it already, but I'll say it again. It's by Picture This Plus. The Rick Rack is Country Rust from Lady.Creates. Um, this frame is from Hobby Lobby. It's a clip collage frame. I've turned it sideways. It would normally hang the other way. I took the clips off, which was easy to do. They're just, um, 
there's just push pins on the back of this that are holding like twine with some clips. So you, you can just pull the push pins out, which is what I did. Uh, then I initially thought I was gonna have to add a bunch of stuff to the back of this to be able to drill into it, but I didn't. So that's where I did a bunch of unnecessary gluing and, and junk that didn't need to happen. So you don't need to do anything weird. What I did was I drilled a pilot hole and then put a wood screw in here for the frame. And then I drilled, what I did, I laid this all out, positioned it so that I could tell where it should go. You know, used a pencil to draw where everything was gonna be, measured it. And then I drilled pilot holes for these four guys. And then there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, tack. And I just pushed it into the wood. The wood's pretty soft. They're called cut tacks. Um, here's another close up for you. I think they're called cut tacks, but um, I created a tutorial video for you for this and how to make the eggs. That's what it'll be. I'll walk you through the whole process of making the eggs. So that video is gonna post the weekend of market on Friday. It's already done, it's already scheduled. So you can look for that then. Um, I The item numbers, in case you want them for the <clears throat> frame here, or for the gingham ribbon, this gingham ribbon is also from Hobby Lobby. The item numbers are gonna be on the pattern. They'll be on the tutorial video. And I will um, put them on my website, www luminousfiberarts.com and when you click on the pattern name it'll take you to the information about the pattern and I'll include the links there as well. So I had a lot of fun with this design. It was really really enjoyable for me. I really love chickens. I um, got chickens as a teenager back I don't know if you can still mail order. I assume you just internet order, but back then you had a, like a mail order catalog. And so a couple of my friends were getting ch fancy chickens and they were like, do you want to get some? And so I used some of my money. I think I got six chicks. Um, I think I had buff Orpingtons and I don't remember what the other one was. I'd have to look at chicken breeds to figure it out. So, um, but they were, they were cute. I liked having the chickens. Um, and I've always kind of liked chickens since then. So this design, you know, kind of takes me back to uh, my farming days a little bit. So let's see. Oh, about this design. It's not that many colors, but it uses a lot of floss to stitch these um, motifs. So on the pattern, I put how much I used. And if I used up really close to the entire skein, I mentioned that on the pattern with an asterisk and explained that, you know, you might want to get an extra skein because if you stitch differently than me or if you're stitching on 28 count, you could run out. Um, so if it seemed really close, I made a note. So for like this blue, the Capri by Weak Style Works, I had like half a skein left. It needed, you know, you need two, but I had half skein left, so you shouldn't run out. But, um... The red used nearly all of two skeins. This pink here used nearly all of one skein. And then the green, even though there's not actually that much of the green, just the, the vininess and the way you have to skip, you know, bits because it's not just straight fill in. I used up almost an entire skein of that. So um, I'm recommending that if you're stitching on 28 or 32, you get an extra skein. If you're stitching on 36 or 40 with one strand, you shouldn't need that much, but I ended up you know, using quite a bit of floss because as I said, there's quite a bit of stitching here and um, there aren't that many different colors. Okay, <clears throat> so you can order all of these designs from your favorite shop. And if I'm your favorite shop, you're welcome to order from me. I will not have anything available in my shop until after market. I'm going to shoot for, so I'm gonna be leaving market on Monday, like leaving from market to come back. Monday the 9th. And I will get back 
It's a long drive. I will get back sometime on Tuesday the 10th. So I need some time to unpack and put things away so that I have room to then ship you things. Um, so I will, I'm shooting for Wednesday, March 11th, and I'm gonna try for like 7 p.m. Eastern time as my update. But I will send you an email letting you know uh, that everything's been updated in the shop, and letting you know what's in the shop, you know, giving you previews of the floss packs and everything. So I'll have the designs, I'll have the floss packs, I'll have the trims, and I'll have the fabric for you, along with mugs. So what else? Oh, if you're not signed up for my newsletter, but you'd like to sign up, then you can, um, there's a link below the video. You can also just go to luminousfiberarts.com and um, the sign up is right there on the homepage. You just scroll down a little bit and it's right there. Uh, what else did I wanna say? So I'm leaving for market on Wednesday, the sixth, fourth, I think, right after class, I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> Praying for good weather. Please pray for good weather for me to get down there. I do plan to purchase some things for my shop while I'm down there from other designers. So um, I will try to load those into the shop if I have, I'm sure I'll have some time over the weekend at some point. At least I think I will. As soon as I can put them in the shop, I will. If you need me to hold those because you're wanting to order them like if, if you want to purchase those, but you're also wanting to purchase my designs for me, go ahead and purchase what I get and then ask me to hold it for you and I'll ship everything together. But I need you to like, let me know. Uh, anything else? One thing I wanted to mention that I forgot is that I will be leaving my Etsy shop open while I'm at market. Um, but I obviously won't be able to ship. So from March fourth until my return on the 10th. I won't be shipping, but I'll leave my shop open and I'll put a note that items purchased then will ship when I get back. So you can still purchase things and the shop will be open. I just won't be shipping obviously during that time. I guess that's all the informational stuff. Um, I'd like to thank some people for being awesome and getting me through all this. <laughs> Oh man, it's been quite a ride. Um, thanks to my mom who has offered to help me every step of the way and supported me and given me advice and um, helped me with color indecision and everything. Any, any question, any problem, my mom's been there. She's awesome. Thanks to my boyfriend, Kevin, same thing. Advice, uh, I've, I've bent his ear like a million times with indecisions and, and panics and all kinds of things. My friend Cynthia too, you know, she's been great helping me with questions about whether I should do this or that, you know, from a business standpoint, we've had business meetings and we talk about stuff all the time. She gives me her opinion, proofreads some emails. So she's been awesome. She's gotten me through like panicked. I don't think these colors are working conversations. <clears throat> so I so appreciate them for for helping me uh really it's like it takes a village to <laughs> it takes a village to get a designer to market it, i think um thanks to some designers stephanie webb of lindy stitches has been you know texting me cheering me on answering my questions she's been awesome teresa vanette answered a million of my questions i've had different questions at different steps and i've been able to talk to different people and Teresa was super helpful and just gave me like a lot of really good advice um things i wouldn't have thought of beth twist was awesome and spent a lot of time answering questions for me and she gave me a lot of advice that again i wouldn't have thought of so all three of them there were designers really awesome designers who just said if you have a question let me know who who just offered to answer questions um, I know everyone's really busy and I so appreciated their time and their wisdom. Um, thanks to Barbie Pedal Pusher for going through this with me as a first timer. It's been great to have a friend <clears throat> to talk through things, to just commiserate 
our uncertainty together. Um, <laughs> it's been really good to have that. So thanks Barbie for, for your support, for being a shoulder. Um, thanks to all of you for your support. I certainly wouldn't be going to market if no one liked my patterns. So thanks for always being so encouraging. Um, thanks for, for stitching my designs, for sharing them. I love seeing what you're working on. And I have to say that I'm just blown away by the, the beautiful stitching I see of my designs. And I feel so lucky. And that's one of the most rewarding things I think about being a designer is seeing other people stitch my, my designs and how much they enjoy it. And also I love seeing all the creative ways that you finish them and you should never feel like it bothers me that you change anything. Like you change the color of the fabric, you change the kind of fabric, you change, you leave something out, you add something in. Like I'm designing something that is essentially for me because I don't know what other people really want. So I design for me and what I like but I change things all the time and, and you should personalize. So please don't ever feel like because I stitched on 40 count, you need to stitch on 40 count. Sometimes I stitch on 40 count because that's what I had. Sometimes it's because I wanted it to be a certain size. Sometimes it's just because I like 40 count. You do whatever you want. So I encourage you to, to just have fun with it. Um, so I was in the middle of thanking you. Was there anything else I want to say about that? No, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna try to do a video at market if I can, but it probably won't. I don't know when I'll get a chance to post it. I'll come back after market and talk about market at some point, hopefully that week after. I'm on my spring break that week, so there should be some time to, to visit at some point. That's it. Uh, oh, giveaway winners. I'm making this video before I'm drawing the giveaway winners. So the giveaway is ending um, well, it'll have ended by the time you see this video, but I don't know who the winners are yet. So they'll just be contacted and then I'll have to, I guess, announce them later if I can remember to do that. And if I don't, I'm sorry that I forgot, but I, I will let them know that they won. So don't worry. <laughs> Alrighty guys. I think I need to get out of here before, before I make y'all wonder if I'm still sane. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon. Take care.